and thank you very much, Yannick, for the wonderful introduction and for reminding us of that 1994 demonstration. Um, I managed to keep my hair long, you didn't, but anyway, your commitment is still the same. So thank you very much for reminding us. Thank you very much for organizing this conference and to bring together so many people that are so relevant to entrepreneurship in uh, uh, context that might not be as stable as we would like them to be, uh, but also to bring together people who know how important entrepreneurship and economic development can be to bring stability. And I think this is what your discussions will be about today. Um, looking at the list, I saw, of course, entrepreneurs themselves, which is very good, uh, but also multilateral organizations, NGOs, businesses, and I'm happy to say also some fellow ministers. Uh, so let me welcome them uh, specifically. Uh, Mr. Eddy from uh, Liberia, the Minister of Commerce and Industry, who just managed to... Um, four minutes uh, of the conference to have a small, uh, a quick get together. Let me just say that uh, looking at Liberia's situation, and I'm sure Mr. Eddy is much more, uh, uh, in, uh, he can uh, tell you much more about it and probably much more comprehensive than I can. Uh, but I think um, it's very important to stress that we need to combat Ebola, but that we also, after that has been done, should take responsibility uh, for economic development of those three countries. So I already announced that I'm very much prepared to have a trade mission to those three countries as soon uh, as possible. And um, I hope to see you uh, uh, in Liberia next time. Also with us is the minister from uh, Yemen. Very much welcome uh, to Muammar al ayani too. Uh, I hope to come to your country very soon um, because there's not only many challenges, but many, many opportunities. And thank you very much for being here uh, to talk to us about that. And then also with us is Mr. Ibrahim Miro from the Syrian National Coalition Interim Government. Now, for all those who don't know Amsterdam, if you want to know about where you can get the best baklava, the nicest beer, ask Mr. Miro, because he has been living in Amsterdam for quite some time. Uh, very much welcome to him. Fijn dat u er bent en goed om u weer te zien hier. So, um, let me get to uh, the World Bank and the World Bank's Human Development Report. Um, and that report is very relevant, I think, to what you have, will be discussing here today. One of the main causes of crime, according to that report, is unemployment. One of the main causes of social unrest, according to that report, is unemployment. And one of the main causes of instability is unemployment. Unemployment is by far one of the most main reasons why young people join rebel groups or youth gangs. So those of you who represent the business sector have a crucial role to play because employment is what you can provide. Recent surveys show that nine out of 10 jobs are created in the private sector. One and a half billion people live in conflict regions and 350 million of them are still living in extreme poverty. And what they need is a job. They need peace, they need stability. And only then they can work together towards economic, inclusive economic growth. Over the past three decades, 1.2 billion people have been lifted out of extreme poverty. Hunger has been steadily reduced. We have achieved the most spectacular economic growth that has ever been, uh, that, have, that, we, that we ever witnessed. So we need to continue down that path. But it means that we need each other's help. Partnerships are crucial. It's partnerships that the ones that you are forging here today that have opened up new opportunities for everyone involved. Dutch businesses have played their part and it's very tempting to dwell on past and current successes like the sustainable water technology in Ghana or the work that Friesland Campina is doing with tens of thousands of dairy farmers in Asia and Africa. 
But I know one thing about entrepreneurs, they never look back. They always look ahead to the future, to new challenges, new opportunities. So that's what we should do, look at tomorrow's successes. New business opportunities mainly lie in places that um, also have large challenges. Entrepreneurship in developing countries, economically emerging countries, is often quite complex due to confusing or, very, or, or changing legislation, due to bureaucracy, although we have some of that ourselves, uh, and corruption. This applies all the more to fragile and conflict-torn regions, as many of you know. As a government, we try to reduce some of the risks that entrepreneurs face. And that's why we have developed risk-mitigating instruments for investments in many of those conflict-affected countries and contexts. The Dutch Good Growth Fund, for example, provides loans for small and medium-sized enterprises investing in developing countries. <clears throat> As you know, the Dutch policy is all about combining aid and trade wherever that's possible. And that's why I'm also using international contacts to promote. That's why I'm also trying to establish um, this link between trade and aid, not only in the Netherlands, not only with you, but also on a more global scale as a co-chair of the Global Partnership for Effective Development Corpor Corporation. And in the Global Partnership, we want to bring together all stakeholders, government, civil society, private sector, private uh, foundations, other actors, all on equal terms. And I think what you are doing here today is something like the Global Partnership. Last week, um, I was again um, witness to the importance of working together on economic development in fragile context. I visited uh, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, the R Democratic Republic of Congo is as you know, particularly a uh, distressing example of a fragile state. Potentially, it's one of the richest nations on Earth because it has mineral resources that could bring untold um, uh, richness uh, and affluency to the country. But those resources, unfortunately, have brought untold misery. We should understand that. So we opportunities to change that, to bring those natural resources, uh, to have them work for the good. Uh, and that's why we started the Conflict-Free Tin Initiative. It enables companies to buy certified conflict-free tin from the eastern part of DRC. It promo promotes sound mining, and the profits of that sound mining do not go to armed militias, but go to the local population. Miners earn decent wages and can work in decent circumstances. The program started a few years ago in the Kalimbi mine in the eastern part of Congo. And it immediately had the uh, effect of improving the position of the miners. In earlier days, they had been harassed when the mine was controlled by local rebel leaders and corruption was rife. Now the bags of tin uh, are sealed weight tagged by an official of the Ministry of Mines. And this prevents conflict-free tin from disappearing into dubious sources. The bags are transferred by an intermediary to the exporter in Bukavu. It's shipped in sealed oil, oil drums to Dar es Salaam, and after that it's melted in Malaysia. Companies like Tata Steel, Philips, and Fairphone are using the tin in, products, uh, in their products. Over 100 mines have now been certified, and the, we are gearing up our support. And that extra support means that another 500 can be certified. The owner of the mine, uh, I spoke to him last week, told me that in the space of six months, he had already paid more export taxes than the financial contribution of the Netherlands to the program. So the investment has already paid itself back many, many times.
And this, I think, is an example of how we can and should work together to uh, be able to bring development and stability in fragile context. The fact that we should do it doesn't mean that it's easy, and that's why you're together here today. Um, many people also in those fragile countries still don't benefit uh, enough. Women lag behind, young people, ex-combatants, and one of my main aims is to ensure that the benefits not only of the conflict-free tin, tin initiative, but also other initiatives are shared by everyone. And organizations like Spark play a very important role in achieving this aim. And we saw a wonderful example uh, just in the, in the uh, film. And I do hope to be able to come to Jerusalem, uh, and come to your shop and have some of your, what must be wonderful uh, cake. So we look forward to that, no? Um, Earlier on, I uh, already mentioned that um, we need to work together. Uh, we need governments to play their role because NGOs, entrepreneurs cannot do it by themselves. It's crucial to work with government uh, bodies and few things contribute more to a country's stability than a government that serves the population, that makes good, solid laws uh, that is transparent and that fights corruption. Resolving the problems uh, that we just mentioned, mentioned requires a transformation also from governments, but it cannot be orchestrated from capital cities in other parts of the globe. Governments concerned themselves must take the helm in the partnerships that are needed to bring stability and development. And that's why the Netherlands was also very keen to sign the new de deal for fragile states, which identifies those varied responsibilities. But in the meantime, we also have to play our part. Um, we are uh, working on promoting corporate social responsibility within the framework of the OECD, but also working with different sectors in the Netherlands, for example, the textiles and the energy sector. Uh, we work to promote the decent work agenda, uh, and we are very keen to hear from all of you where we should step in or do more. So please keep that economic, keep that information coming. And we want to do that because uh, whatever policy you have, uh, whatever jargon uh, we use uh, to define that policy, it's basically only about one thing. And that one thing is to make sure that economic growth uh, benefits everyone, that economic growth is inclusive growth, and that that inclusive growth, uh, I truly believe, brings can bring stability and development in countries and contexts and to people uh, who have been deprived of that stability for too long a time. So we're committed to continue to work with you on inclusive economic development, but let me also say we need you to work with us because even as a minister, you're kind of powerless if you don't have friends. You're my friends, and I hope to see you in many different occasions in the coming time. Lots of success, and please keep up the good work. Thank you.